In this work, we present a face deblurring method for mobile phones using a dual camera fusion system. Mobile photography is challenging for kids' activities and low light scenes, as we often get blurry photos due to fast subject motion, our long exposure time. To address motion blur, we propose a robust and efficient system to deblur faces on mobile phones. Our method leverages the synchronized dual capture system from the wide and ultra wide cameras, which are commonly available on modern premium smartphones. When we detect face motion, we turn on the ultra-wide camera to capture a reference shot with a faster shutter speed. The main shot from the wide camera is blurry, while the reference image is sharp but noisy, and low resolution. We then learn deep convolutional neural networks to align and fuse the two shots and recover a sharp and clean face. Our method only takes 0.5 seconds on mobile phones, allowing users to see the deblurred result right after pressing the shutter button. Our system has been shipped on Google Pixel 6 in 2021 as Face Unblur. To avoid motion blur, mobile cameras today often reduce the exposure time when detecting motion. However, in low light conditions, shorter exposure time will make images look too noisy. On the other hand, under 60 Hz AC supplied artificial lighting, camera has to expose slower than 1 over 120 seconds to avoid banding artifacts caused by the sensor rolling shutter effects. Therefore, we cannot always rely on shorter exposure time to avoid motion blur. Motion deblurring is also a long-standing research problem that has been studied for decades. Conventional blind deconvolution approaches often use iterative optimization to estimate blur kernels in latent images, which are too slow to run on mobile devices. Besides, those methods often generate ringing artifacts or unnatural results when failed. Recent learning-based methods learn end-to-end -end deep CNNs to deblur an image without estimating a blur kernel. However, large model size and high memory consumption are usually the bottlenecks to deploy those models on mobile devices. The ML-based models are often biased by the training data and do not generalize well to real images in the wild. Reference-based methods take an additional image for deblurring. Our method belongs to this category. Existing works typically take long and short exposure shots sequentially using the same camera. We found that such sequentially captured shots could be difficult to align when subject motion is fast. Here we show an example of two consecutive frames from a 30fps streaming camera, where we often see non-rigid motion on the subject. Such a large motion could easily break the alignment and lead to visual artifacts. Instead of taking two shots sequentially, we take the main and reference shots concurrently using the wide and ultra-wide cameras. By this way, our alignment only needs to handle the parallax between the camera baseline, which is easier to produce satisfying results. Our system captures raw bursts from both wide and ultra-wide cameras. We first merge raw bursts into linear raw, and crop the face from both the wide and ultra-wide images. We then apply deep CNNs to align and fuse the cropped faces for deblurring. After fusion, we blend the deblurred face back to the wide image and apply post-processing steps, such as tone mapping, to output a clear and sharp image. Next, we will explain the details in the alignment and fusion step. We consider the blurry face cropped from the wide camera as the source image, and the sharp but noisy face from the ultra-wide camera as the reference. We first match the color of reference to the source by adjusting the gains and color conversion matrix. Then, we generate a face mask using subject segmentation, and use the PWC net to compute the optical flows between source and reference images. We use the optical flow to warp the reference image, and estimate an occlusion mask. Our fusion net then takes the source image, warped reference image, face mask and occlusion mask as inputs to generate a deblurred face. When aligning images with optical flow, we found that the flows generated from full-size images are often too noisy, resulting in unsatisfactory alignment and fusion results. This is due to the motion magnitude of the dataset where the PWC net is trained on. Most optical flow training datasets have maximum motion magnitude at around 100 pixels, while the shift between our source and reference images could be as large as 300 pixels on a 12 megapixels resolution. To account for this, we downsample the input images by four times to estimate the flow, and upsample the flow for warping the reference image. This gives us a pretty clean and robust alignment quality. We further optimize the architecture of PWC Net by using the MobileNet backbone to significantly reduce the latency, memory, and model size. 
Our optimized PWC net can achieve similar flow quality as the original PWC net to align faces, but runs much faster on mobile phones. Our fusion net is a 5 level U net. Note that the size of the crop ultra wide face is about half of the source face. Therefore, we resize the reference image, subject mask, and occlusion mask to be two times smaller than the source image. And feed them to the second level of the fusion net for saving memory. We train our PWC net on the autoflow dataset. To train our fusion net, we collect about 2,600 static portrait images which have wide and ultra wide pairs. We consider the static faces from the wide camera as the ground truths, and generate random motion blur kernels to synthesize motion blur on faces. Note that we use linear images for training and inference. Here we apply gamma correction for better visualization. To handle real-world images, we also add synthetic highlights on the ground truth image to simulate saturated light streaks after motion blur. We found that the model trained with synthetic light streaks can reduce the saturations caused by eyeballs or glass reflections, and generate more natural results with fewer ringing artifacts. Our fusion net is trained with a content L1 loss, a perceptual loss, and a color consistency loss. Although we configure the camera driver to synchronize the brightness and white balance between wide and ultra-wide cameras, the reference image may still have a slightly different color as the sensor is different. We apply a Gaussian blur on both the output and source image, and encourage the local average colors to be similar, so that the color will not be changed after fusion. Without the color consistency loss, we found the fusion results often have color shifting, especially on hairs. When the color shifting appears on clothes, it will make the transition between fusion and non-fusion regions more easily visible. With the color consistency loss, we can alleviate these color shifting issues. After fusion, we blend the deblurred face back to the full source image with a soft alpha blending mask. And then apply post-processing steps, such as local and global tone mapping, to generate an 8-bit gamma corrected image. Our fusion algorithm requires a mobile phone to stream both wide and ultra-wide cameras. However, this will consume high power and memory usage, and cause thermal risk. To save power, we design an adaptive streaming system to turn on the ultra-wide camera dynamically. Specifically, we learn a lightweight SVM model to predict if the current frame needs motion deblur based on the metadata available in the camera driver layer, such as exposure time, digital gain, face motion vectors and sharpness. By this design, we will turn on ultra-wide camera streaming only when the capturing environment may potentially produce motion blur on faces. We also design fallback mechanisms to ensure that we won't deliver images with any objectionable artifacts to users. Before fusion, we check the image metadata such as wide and ultra-wide synchronization, face motion from neighboring frames, and sensor gains to ensure that we have a good reference image for deblurring. After fusion, we check the MSE between source and fusion images. If the MSE is too small, it means the improvement from fusion is not significant. If an image fails any of these checks, we will skip fusion and fall back to the source image. We capture face motion using Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro to evaluate the proposed algorithm and system. Among the 6K images we collected, 33% of images trigger our fusion debler and about 29% of images pass all the fallback checks and apply our fusion successfully. Our dataset covers diverse motions such as kid activities. Kids running. Walking. Jumping. Working out. Bicycling. playing basketball, and playing volleyball. Our method is also tested on low light conditions, where faces often appear blurry due to long exposure time. Our method can still recover the kids' facial expressions. While we use spatially invariant blurred images for training, our fusion net is still able to remove dynamic motion blur in real images. For example, in this shot, the light streaks on the eyes and teeth show different orientations due to the head rotation. Our method can still reduce motion blur on the entire face. We also compare our results with recent academic approaches, including three generic single image deblurring methods, one multi frame deblurring method, two video deblurring methods, and a face deblurring method.
Existing methods typically cannot remove large motion blur well. The deblurring results are either lacking facial details or containing visual artifacts such as ringings. We found that Deblur GAN V2 and PVDNet usually produce better results among the existing approaches. However, our method generates the sharpest faces without artifacts. Our method also works well when subjects wear face masks, while a face specific method may fail as it relies on face priors for deblurring. As our dataset does not have ground truth images, we use the no reference quality metric, NEMA, for evaluation. We evaluate all the deblurring results on 100 representative images. The plot shows that our method outperforms other approaches significantly. We also compare our method against commercial products. We use Pixel 6 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro to capture the same moving subject simultaneously. We can see that iPhone captured blurry shots under the same exposure time. We also use post-capturing tools such as the shake reduction filter in Adobe Photoshop and the remaster function in Samsung Gallery to process the source image. Photoshop doesn't remove the blur completely and sometimes generates severe ringing artifacts. Samsung's remaster function works well in certain images, but the results are overly smooth and sometimes doesn't apply deblurring at all. It takes about 5 to 10 seconds for Photoshop and Samsung remaster to process a 12 megapixels image, while our fusion can be done within 0.5 seconds. To understand the effectiveness of the reference image, we train our fusion net without using reference images. The network learns single image deblurring in such a setting. Without the reference image, the model cannot remove large motion blur and often leaves undesirable visual artifacts. One may question whether our fusion net just learns to copy all the details from the reference to source. We provide an experiment to answer this question. When we set the source image to zeros, the result looks all black without any facial details. If fusion net just learns copying, we should see the output looks the same as the reference image. When we set the reference to zeros, the fusion result shows an unnatural face. If fusion net learns copying, we should see an all black face. Therefore, our fusion net does not blindly copy everything from the reference to the output. Instead, it learns the correspondences between the source and reference and applies fusion accordingly. If we set the face mask to zero, fusion net does not apply fusion at all. In fact, we can use the face mask to control where we would like to apply fusion. We can apply fusion to the entire image by extending the face mask to cover the full image. The contribution of the occlusion mask is mainly at face boundaries or background. When the face mask falsely includes some background pixels, the occlusion mask can exclude the warping artifacts in the blending stage. Without the occlusion mask, the artifacts will be transferred from the warped reference image to the fusion result. Here we show the device performance when running our system on Pixel 6 Pro. On average, our adaptive streaming system turns on ultra-wide in only 1.8% of the camera session time. The average amortized power and memory cost are fairly low. Finally, we discuss the limitations and failure cases of our method. The quality of our fusion results mainly depend on the quality of the ultra-wide image. Under an extreme low light condition, the ultra-wide image could be excessively noisy, and the fusion result may look noisy as well. When the input face is too small, the ultra-wide image may not have enough facial details for deblurring. The fusion result may still look blurry. Our fallback mechanism will skip fusion for both extreme low light and small faces. As we only apply fusion to face regions, when the clothes have regular texture, such as the baby's apron in this example, the blending boundary could be visible. This issue could be mitigated by applying a strong blending boundary smoothing, restricting face mask to cover skin only, or even extending face mask to cover the full body. In conclusion, we have presented a robust dual camera fusion system to deblur faces on mobile phones. We learned deep CNNs to align and fuse wide and ultra wide images for deblurring, and designed an adaptive streaming system to turn on the ultra wide camera dynamically for saving power and memory usage. Our method outperforms existing academic and commercial solutions on face deblurring, and this system can be run at an interactive rate on Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Finally, we thank all the colleagues from the Pixel Camera team and Google Research team for their support on developing, testing, and delivering this feature to Google Pixel.